All right, <laughs> what the hell is going on here? The graphics card, it's as big as the computer itself. It's bigger. It's bigger than the computer itself. And uh, we're going to be plugging this monstrosity into this. <laughs> you guys remember that meme where people are like, we're going to actually start plugging our PCs into our graphics cards? Well, that's now a reality. Welcome to the future. Hey, if you enjoy content like this, drop a like, make sure to subscribe, and smash that bell so you never miss another video. Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here. Welcome back to the channel and I hope you've all been doing well. Today we're going to be taking a look and testing out the B-Link GTI 12 mini PC. Along with that, we've also got a very special product to go along with it, their new dedicated EX graphics card docking station. As with all my reviews, this isn't a paid review and all my thoughts are mine and mine alone. Recently on the channel, I did have the opportunity to take a look at another mini PC from B-Link called the SEI 14. And overall, I was quite impressed by the capabilities of the machine and such a small footprint. I'm expecting this machine to perform just as good, if not better. However, what will make this review even more fun is that by using their dedicated docking station, we'll be able to pair this machine up with a full-fledged, discrete desktop graphics card to further boost performance. I think that'll give you guys a good background as to what to expect with this review, so let's get into it. To start us off, I just wanted to do an unboxing of the mini PC as well as the dock itself to show you guys what's included. The GTI 12 comes in a plain white box with a picture of the mini PC on the top with some specifications listed at the back. Opening up the box, you get the mini PC PC itself wrapped in a plastic sleeve, and then at the bottom we've got a power cable and an HDMI cord, so you've got everything you need to get started. The EX docking station comes in a plain brown card box with a white sleeve with some product details. Right at the top we have a manual and the dock itself, then we have two 8-pin PCIe cables, a GPU mounting bracket, a Wi-Fi M.2 slot card with some mounting screws, and then a power cable. Next, let's take a look at the specifications of B-Link's GTI 12. For the CPU, we have an Intel Core i9-12900H. This is a process processor based on Intel's Alder Lake architecture. It has 6 P cores with a boost clock of up to 5 GHz and 8 E cores that boost up to 3.8 GHz for a total of 20 threads. It does also have a built-in iGPU, but since this architecture was released before Arc, it just uses their older Iris Z graphics with 96 execution units and a boost clock of up to 1.45 GHz. And you guys will see some interesting results with this iGPU. For RAM, we get 32 GB of DDR5 SODIMM running at 48 800 megahertz. For storage, we have a 1 terabyte NVMe drive, which is the crucial P3+. Plus. It's a Gen 4 drive with decent read and write speeds and no DRAM cache. There is also another M.2 Gen 4 slot available, so if you need to expand storage, you have the ability to do so. When it comes to design and aesthetics, I'm not going to be spending too much time here because this PC looks nearly identical to the previous B-Link mini PC I reviewed. It has a metallic gray finish and it's a small square PC. That's pretty much all there is to it but it works, it looks sleek, and you can integrate it easily into any sort of environment. What I will highlight though is that the GTI 12 is quite a bit larger. We're looking at 158 millimeters when it comes to its length and width and measures 55.8 millimeters in height. So there's definitely an increase in the size, but it's nothing that'd make it stick out like a sore thumb. On the front of the unit, we have a USB type A 10 gig port, an SD card slot, a USB C 10 gig port, and a 3.5 millimeter audio jack, and then the power button. On the rear, we can see some ventilation grills, and then we have more so we have four more USB type A 10 gig ports, two 2.5 gigabit LAN ports, one display port, 1.4A connector, one HDMI 2.0 port, another 3.5 millimeter audio jack, except this one also doubles up as the clear CMOS button, one USB-C Thunderbolt 4 port, and then the AC in port. So in terms of IO, this mini PC is loaded. I should also mention that the GTI 12 supports Bluetooth 5.2 and Wi-Fi 6, which is still adequate for the vast majority of users. Moving on to testing, I want to first state that the GTI 12 comes preloaded with Windows 11, and I am happy to report it's a very clean install, just like the SEI 14. There wasn't any bloatware at all, just the default Microsoft apps, Intel Arc drivers, and that's it. Everything else you see is stuff I installed for my testing. For our first benchmark, we have Cinebench R23, and here the GTI 12 does quite well in the single core test, scoring 1,928, and also scores 15,869 in the multi-core score, which is considerably better than what the SEI 14 scored. In Geekbench 6, we continue to see some really good scores, 2,682 for the single core result and 12,670 for the multi-core score. So the higher core count is definitely helping out this PC. After that, we have PC Mark 10 and 
here is where things start to get a little interesting. We got an overall score of just 6,500, which is lower than what our SEI 14 scored, which has an ultra five Meteor Lake CPU with less cores, and that mini PC scored 6,933 in this test. Now you can take a look at our essential score, and here the GTI 12 does pretty well, scoring 11,347, and that's because we've got more cores and they're clocked higher as well. However, we see it does worse in the productivity tests, as well as the digital content creation test, and that's because the iGPU is leveraged in those benchmarks, and since the 12900H has an inferior iGPU compared to the Ultra 5 125H, which uses ARC graphics, the performance drops, and you guys will see later on how that translates to gaming performance. Moving on to Handbrake, where I transcode a 4K video project file from my MSI Z790 Carbon Max Wi-Fi 2 review, and transcode it down to 1080p 60fps using AV1, but we're not using the iGPU here, just the CPU. And the GTI 12 ends up doing quite well here, finishing the render in just 19 minutes and 20 seconds, which is better than the SCI 14, which makes sense because in raw CPU power, the 12900H is more powerful. Then when it comes to transcoding with QuickSync and leveraging the iGPU, I couldn't use the AV1 codec since the IRC graphics don't support it, so I had to use H.265, which sure doesn't look as good as AV1, but the output was still acceptable and we see our render time drop to just 5 minutes and 54 seconds. Let's move on to gaming and the first game I tried is Rampage Knights, which is a 2D indie beat-em-up, and when it comes to games like this, the GTI 12 did absolutely fine. Like an idiot, I forgot to turn off VSync, so we were capping at my monitor's max refresh rate, but it's all good, 165 FPS for this game is super smooth, and then that gives you the idea that when playing games like this that are light on graphics, the GTI 12 will have absolutely no problems. After that, I tried Halo Reach at 1080p max settings, and this will represent how the GTI 12 does when playing an older classic title from the 360 era, but enhanced. And when I first dropped into the level, it was stuttering and hitching a lot, but then performance became a lot better just a few seconds later, so I'm not sure what was going on there, but overall performance was still decent and totally playable. Now, moving on to some more modern games, and in my last video, I showed actual gameplay because the SCI 14 did decently, and that's due to the better art graphics, but unfortunately, the 12900H struggled here, so the results are just coming straight from my Excel sheet. The first game I tried was Baldur's Gate 3, and that was unplayable. Counter-Strike 2 ran okay. It was definitely playable if you just want to mess around, but definitely not suitable for competitive play. Hogwarts Legacy was just a straight-up fail because even though I was able to boot into the game, it was doing this. Yeah, it was flashing and it looked like it was just artifacting, so I just didn't even bother. Cyberpunk 2077 ran better than I had expected, and this game was recently updated with FSR 3 fame generation, so if this was really your only way to play, at least there is an avenue to make it somewhat smoother, but the input lag is definitely noticeable, so just bear that in mind. Then I tried Black Myth Wukong, which is an awesome game, definitely recommend checking it out, but play it on a more powerful system as this was just unplayable and it totally ruined the experience. So overall, gaming performance with the GTI 12 and the 12900H's iGPU isn't great. I mean, it's enough to handle like older games, retro games, light indie titles, but for new modern games, you're gonna need a lot more power. And that is exactly where B-Link's EX docking station comes into play. With its integrated 600 watt power supply and PCIe Gen 4 X8 slot, you can leverage this device to connect the GTI 12 to a full-fledged desktop graphics card. This dock also has other features as well like another M.2 2280 slot, a Wi-Fi slot with support for external antennas, but I didn't really test those features out for this review as we're mainly concerned about gaming performance. Setting up the dock is quite simple. The GTI 12 has a rubber seal on the bottom that can be removed to expose its integrated PCIe slot, and then the PC itself just slots right into the PCIe connector on the dock. Then you take your graphics card and just install it into the X60. Slot. Now, as straightforward as that sounds, there are some limitations with this dock that I need to highlight for you guys. So initially, I wanted to test this dock out with my RTX 3080. The MSI Gaming X Trio model that I use uses three 8-pin connectors, and this dock only comes with two 8-pin cables. And this particular card needs all three 8-pin cables plugged in, otherwise it just will not start. They definitely should have designed the dock with three PCIe 8-pin ports and provided three cables, especially if the integrated power supply is rated at 600 watts, or at the very least, a cable with two 8-pin plugs with one daisy chain or pick tilled. So then I decided to use my EVGA RTX 2080 XE, which only needs one 8-pin and one 6-pin PCIe connector, and this GPU will still provide us with a nice boost in gaming performance and allow us to leverage better settings. There is another limitation with this dock, and a rather infuriating one that we'll discuss later on. So now I can show you guys some better gameplay footage and discuss the performance results. So the first game I tested was Baldur's Gate 3, and I tested at 1080 
1080p with high settings. With the RTX 2080 now working in tandem with the GTI 12 mini PC, we see a massive boost in performance. 91 FPS average and 56 on the 1% lows. I personally think that if they had paired the CPU with some better RAM, it would have allowed the CPU to stretch its legs a bit more and help to smooth out the frame times. But for this title, I think the performance overall is decent. Counter-Strike 2 at 1080p with low settings is next, and performance has also been drastically improved here. We attained an average FPS of 361 and 126 on the 1% lows, so a lot smoother and hey, if you wanted to start playing this more competitively or just wanted to experience better and more engaging gameplay, then this dock really does the trick. Next, we've got Hogwarts Legacy at 1080p with DLSS quality using a mixture of high and medium settings. The RTX 2080 connected via the EX dock now finally allows us to play this game and with decent performance. I should also mention that I tested in Hogsmeade, which is a very demanding section of the game with a bunch of NPCs running around. With the RTX 2080 and the GTI 12, we were able to manage 88 FPS average and 52 FPS for the 1% lows. For a single player game like this, what I would personally do is to just attain a more consistent experience is that I would just cap the frame rate to 60 FPS. Next we have Cyberpunk 2077, which I tested at 1440p with DLSS quality and a mixture of high and medium settings, and the performance was very impressive, 101 FPS average and 67 for the 1% lows, and even though the RTX 20 series doesn't support NVIDIA's frame generation, we can still utilize FSR3 frame gen and that really helps in smoothing out the frames and this would give you the headroom to utilize something like ray tracing. So I'm quite happy with how much performance is elevated when you're able to utilize this dock with this small mini PC. The last game we have is Black Myth Wukong, a newer title and I was happy to see that the RTX 2080 is still doing decently in this game. Yes, we did have to utilize DLSS but we're still using the quality preset and most of the settings were still set to high and you can see performance is decent, 72 FPS average and 51 on the 1% lows, which would allow you to have an enjoyable experience for the most part. After doing these tests, it's great to see how this design by incorporating a PCIe slot into the mini PC and designing a compatible dock with a full-fledged desktop GPU allows for a small footprint design and still enables users to experience immensely better graphics and performance for their machine. But we're not done yet, and what I wanted to do next was something even more exciting, and in fact, B-Link were the ones who suggested I do this for my review. They said that, hey, we know you've got a great test bench with a 4090 and said, you know what, we'd like you to leverage your 4090 with our dock and the GTI 12 and compare the two setups in a head-to-head -head showdown and compare performance. And I thought that would be a great idea because then this would allow you guys to see just how much you can boost performance with the fastest gaming GPU currently available on the market and how it compares to a proper desktop test bench with a 14900K. However, there is another flaw that I wanted to highlight to you guys which I was talking about earlier. So the dock's GPU bracket mount is only compatible with two slot graphics cards or more specifically graphics cards that only have a two slot bracket. And as you guys can see from this picture, my RTX 4090 Gaming X Trio uses a three slot bracket. Therefore, it can't fit straight away into the dock. Furthermore, just like with my RTX 3080, it comes with a three 8 pin to 112 VHPWR adapter, but I was determined to make this work, so I ordered a 2 8-pin to 12 VHPWR adapter from Amazon. This is this one is from Fastgear, and I've used their cables and adapters before, and they do just fine. And I also loosened the three-slot mounting bracket and by doing that, that allowed me to fit in my RTX 4090. Initially, what I was thinking about doing was using a PCIe uh, extender or riser cable, but then that would have made the whole setup look so much more jankier and it kind of would defeat the whole purpose of this dock. I did forward this information to B-Link and they did put up a note on their website which does state those limitations and incompatibilities, so kudos to them for doing that and listening to the feedback, but I think if they were to develop a version 2 of this dock, they should incorporate those upgrades to allow for better GPU compatibility where users don't have to order adapters or modify their graphics cards physically to fit them in. Alrighty, so let's move on to the fun stuff and I'll have the specs for my test bench below in the description. I tested the games at 4K because I wanted to really leverage the GPU as much as possible and compare performance and I didn't want to test at like 1080p because then we'd just be doing CPU benchmarks against each other. But what's comical is that the first game I tested, which is Baldur's Gate 3, at 4K with high settings, we can still see just how much our 4090 was getting bottlenecked by the CPU. My test bench basically offers double the performance with much higher and consistent frame 
sometimes. Though this game is a turn-based strategy game, so due to its nature, it's not like people are going to be demanding to play with buttery smooth frame rates, and 88 FPS average is still fine, but the lows at 51 FPS really show us how much this game can be held back by the CPU. Next, we've got Hogwarts Legacy at 4K DLSS quality, high settings with ray tracing enabled, and we see some interesting results. So the average FPS is similar on both of our systems, but our 1% lows again suffer, and I'm not sure if this is also just due to the lower performance from the CPU because the 12900H isn't really a terrible CPU by any means, even if it is a mobile part, but I think it's held back by the low configured power limit, the slower RAM, and also with the dock there will be more latency introduced. And for some reason, recording on the 4090 using Nvidia Share seems to penalize performance a lot more when using the EX dock in GTI 12 as opposed to using it on my test system. So performance in the footage is a bit lower, so just disregard that. Moving on, and we have Cyberpunk 2077 4K DLSS quality high settings with ray tracing on Ultra, and performance between the two systems seems a lot closer here. Our test bench managed to attain 83 FPS average and 68 on the 1% lows, and our GTI 12 managed to attain 73 FPS average and 57 on the 1% lows. So that's not too bad. Lastly, we have Black Myth Wukong at 4K, DLSS quality, high settings, and I didn't bother with ray tracing as I find the software Lumen from Unreal Engine 5 that's built into this game is already good enough, and ray tracing is just far too heavy for visuals that aren't nearly as good to justify the hit. So with these settings, our test bench managed to attain 111 FPS average and 94 on the 1% lows. So overall, that's excellent performance. Now on the GTI 12, we attained 104 FPS average, so relative to my test bench, that's pretty close, but again, it's the 1% lows which suffer. Although it's not horrible, I just find there would be way too much variance in performance. So what I would do is just cap the frame rate to 60 FPS at this stage and call it a day. You'll still get an overall smooth and consistent experience and be able to enjoy this awesome action adventure game with amazing visuals. The B-Link GTI 12 combined with the EX12 docking station is really an intriguing package, offering the flexibility of a mini PC with the potential of desktop level graphics. However, with a retail price of over $1,000, not including a separate graphic card, it's worth considering what kind of user will benefit most from this setup. For most, especially those focused solely on maximizing performance per dollar, building a traditional desktop PC might be a better option in this price range. A custom build offers more freedom with component choices and generally stronger overall performance for tasks like gaming and content creation. That said, this bundle would be ideal for users who value space efficiency, portability, and modularity in their setup. Professionals working in smaller spaces or on the go, users who need a compact yet powerful machine would find the GTI 12 and the dock appealing. It also caters well to users who may primarily work with productivity tasks but want the flexibility to upgrade with a GPU when higher performance is needed. For these niche cases, B-Link's innovative solution allows the GTI 12 to act as a capable workstation by day and a lightweight gaming rig by night. In conclusion, the B-Link GTI 12 and EX docking station offer an impressive blend of versatility and power for those looking for a compact computing solution with upgradable performance. The GTI 12 holds its own for daily productivity tasks and lighter gaming, thanks to its solid CPU and ample RAM. However, for those needing more graphical horsepower, the EX docking station significantly enhances its capabilities, allowing users to pair it with a full-fledged GPU for noticeable performance boosts and better visuals in gaming and other GPU-intensive tasks. The modularity of the setup is its strongest asset, giving users the flexibility to customize and expand as needed. Despite some limitations with GPU compatibility and and minor hiccups with high-end components, the EX dock proves its worth, bridging the gap between a mini PC and a gaming rig and a relatively small footprint. Beeling's design here is commendable, although future iterations with broader compatibility and refinements could make it even more appealing. For anyone seeking a space-efficient yet robust setup, especially if you're willing to make a few adjustments, this duo can be a game-changer. Alrighty guys, so that's gonna be doing it for this one, and we'll be touching base in the next video. If you guys found this video to be informative and entertaining, then leave a like. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below. Be sure to check out the video description for cool links and ways to support the channel, such as using my Amazon affiliate link. And if you're interested in seeing more content like this, then consider subscribing, I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching, take care and I'll see you in the next one.